Do you feel holy? Do you feel like a saint? If your answer is no, join the club. And yet one of the things that is true for us is that in Jesus Christ and by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, we have been made holy. And that leads me to today's theological term, sanctification. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Friday, October 6th, 2023. Let's start at the beginning. As a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, you have been made holy. To be made holy is to be set apart for a purpose. Our holiness, yours and mine, is not accomplished by our own heroic efforts, lest we think of ourselves as better people than anyone else. And trust me, we're not. There are plenty of non-believers who live saintlier lives than many of us believers, people who behave in a more Christ-like way than many of us do. No, to be holy is not to be holier than thou. It is simply to be called and chosen and set apart by God to bear witness to God's redeeming and reconciling love for the world in Jesus Christ. Now, if that were all there is to say, it would be pretty easy simply to sit back and enjoy our status with no change in how we live our lives. That's where the idea of sanctification comes in. It involves two or three things. First, let's listen to Paul in one of his Thessalonian letters where he says, we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through the belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our proclamation of the good news so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Here's what we can glean from this. You can already see that it has to do with God's gracious choice to set us apart and to grant us the gift of salvation. We are sanctified, in other words, not through our own efforts, but through the working of the Holy Spirit in us. And as with our salvation, we receive it by faith. Second, it is for a purpose, not just for our own personal benefit. When Paul calls us the first fruits of salvation, he has in mind the idea that by what we say and do, we bear witness to God's way in the world. We are to be, in the words of one of our former editions of the Presbyterian Book of Order, a provisional demonstration of what God intends for all humanity. That means telling the good news, but also living it out so that our lives themselves bear witness to this good news. Third, sanctification works in us by kindling in us an ever greater desire to live a life worthy of our calling. The Westminster Confession of Faith puts it this way, they who are effectually called and regenerated, having a new heart and a new spirit created in them are further sanctified, really and personally, through the virtue of Christ's death and resurrection by his word and spirit dwelling in them. The dominion of the whole body of sin is destroyed, and the several lusts thereof are more and more weakened and mortified, and, and, and they more and more quickened and strengthened in all saving graces to the practice of true holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. This is antiquated language, I grant you, but you can see what it's getting at. That sanctification involves a kind of renewing within us to, to be the kind of people we're, we were created to be. Yes, sin, sin still operates within us and we struggle to live our lives as sanctified people, but even in our failures, God's work of sanctification tends to grow in us. Not that we ever reach perfection, but to, but that to the extent that we attend to our spiritual lives, the desire to live a more pleasing life to God continues to chip away at our rough edges until, like stones in a river, we are made ever more smooth, never perfect, but ever improving. So, yes, you are holy, not perfect, not always even better than those who do not believe, but still set apart for God's purposes in the world. 
you are, in a word, sanctified. Tomorrow, theodicy, the problem of evil in a world of God's own creation. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.